So, uh, Nicole, we can go ahead and get started uh, if you like. Um, sure. If people start to come in, I'll admit them. Uh, if you, want, you can introduce yourself. I think most everybody knows you, but go ahead and introduce yourself and you can let them know about any questions they may have and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right, guys. Um, again, my name is Nicole Gardner. And for those that uh, don't know me, I'm the senior vice president of Holbrook and Holbrook Law Offices. Um, we are a real estate law firm in Lexington, Kentucky, um, Louisville, Kentucky, and all of Kentucky, except far, far western and far, far eastern Kentucky. And, and we might even make that work sometimes. Um, what Kim has asked me to present for you today, um, she told me that the audience would be mostly newer agents. So I designed a talk and I would like for it to be a talk, not just me talking at you, but really getting some feedback and questions and interrupt me, that's totally fine. Um, about uh, the title industry, how, how it works, how, why it's so important, what it actually is, and um, the process flow of it. And if we get through that, we can go over, I've, I've got a CD as well that we can go over. That might be something for an, an additional hour um, somewhere, uh, because there's a lot of details packed into that. Um, either Kim or Paul are going to uh, let me know or just blurb out, you can unmute yourself and, and blurb out a, a question if I'm going too fast or you, you have a scenario because there are so many different scenarios in real estate that you would like to get an opinion on, I'm happy to answer it. So, um, and I can't see all the participants. So um, the uh, Paul or Kim might have to tell me, my first question was, okay, and I, obviously I know some of you have closed deals. Um, what is the, uh, has everybody in the room um, closed real estate transactions? If so, have they ever had any title issues? So I think we've got two agents in here now that have not closed the deal yet as far as- Okay, I'm so that, that, I'm just trying to get a feel of where I need to start, so. I've closed um, and, one deal and that was with you actually. Yes, hey, girl, how are you doing? <laughs> doing good, Wonderful. thanks. Good, good, good. Okay, there are so a couple gonna, people that there are a couple people that haven't had any transactions yet on here, so this is this will be very good for sure. Okay, perfect. So, what um, a title provides uh, is the ownership of the property. So, when we have sellers to buyers, um, we get next question. And, and actually, I got ahead of myself. Who in Please just blurt it out. Who does the title provider law firm, who do we represent? Anybody got anything? Kim? Cassie? The buyer? Okay, the so that would be, I would think that that would be the majority of everybody's answer. In fact, we represent the lender. So we, um, when we get an order in the state of Kentucky, many other states are different, actually in 43 other states or 42, um, you have, uh, you could have attorneys on both sides, et cetera, but, and the listing agent uh, requests the title order. In the state of Kentucky, it is requested by the lender. Okay, and the lender is reaching out to us and saying, hey, Will you run title on 123 Main Street for me? We need to ensure that there, um, we are uh, processing and transferring title from the seller to the buyer without liens on it. So when we get that order in, we set it up in our, so it, it's a multifaceted system. We set it up in our system. Um, the importance there is when you do your contract, make sure you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's. I know Remax Elite is awesome at this, but scenario for you. Um, you have, especially over in Richmond, say you're more uh, rural areas. You've got house and piece of property, but they're also selling the piece of uh, land that their granny gave to them that is um, touching the property that they're selling. On the contract, it says 123 Main Street. Um, it does not say 123 Main Street and 123 A or B Main Street. So as a title provider, when we go to the county clerk's office, we search 
one, two, three, what's on the contract, because our crystal ball, we don't have crystal balls. We're only going off the contract. Um, we search one, two, three, Main Street. And we get real close to the closing and somebody says, oh, and it, it may not even be on the agent's part. It might be on the seller's part. We're selling that piece of land too. I actually sat down at a closing mm, about a week before Christmas. Um, and they said, uh, this is, we're supposed to be selling this property in three lots, not the six lots that was on the contract and the six lots that was um, transferred previous. So we're looking at our previous deed from the, the previous uh, transaction. It's not that either. They brought me a plat that was stained like yellow, old, old plat. They said, oh, this was supposed to have been done years ago. Um, needless to say, it didn't close that day, but it closed. Um, and the moral to that story is when you're doing your listing appointment or if you have, um, have the buyer, ask the right questions. Um, don't assume that everybody um, knows what um, is supposed to go just um, with 123A. Um, one way to figure out if it's a separate piece of property is if they have different tax bills, okay? So I went way too deep on that. But so if you, if you think you have a more rural property, um, feel free to call me. Um, but the, the, the main questions are, are you selling what you sold prior to, which is your house and land that it's on, your, your acre or whatever, and are you selling any additional property with that? So that um, being more careful in the rural areas. Here in Lexington, it's not that big of a deal. We've got neighborhoods. They've been platted off forever, um, most of them, most of them correctly. So once we get the order in from the lender, we set it up in our system. Um, we pull the file through and we send, we search, I would say 90% of our own title, um, which is, is a benefit um, for you guys. That means we don't have a third party searcher. We're going off our own title notes. Uh, the, the title is searched. One thing to be aware of right now, some county clerks are still operating on a, um, a shorter staff or uh, doing odd days or some Fayette County is close to the public right now. Um, Fayette County is online. Some of your more rural counties are not online. So there could be a delay in getting the title work back. So once we go down to the county clerk's office, a, a typical lender wants us to do what's called a 30 year search. We are searching that property to make sure it was properly transferred each time to the next person and that it's not, and you'll hear this word, it's a big word, encumbered by anything. So there are, aren't any liens, encumbrances, uh, flaws in title that could um, eventually be a liability for the bank or the borrower. Um, so we want to pass what's called quote unquote clear title to the borrower. Once we get those notes back, then it goes to our title commitment typist. She types up the title. What's, it's, and if anybody wants to come into my office and actually see a title commitment, I think it's an awesome thing to do. I can show you what to pay attention to, why you don't want to pay attention to a lot of it, and just let the attorney, whomever you're using, um, do their work. But it, it allows you to be an expert, to be um, knowledgeable about uh, the actual title part of it. So once that comes back, it's typed up into a commitment form and it says, okay, lender, this is what we need to have happen for this property to, to transfer properly. We need to pay off mortgage A and B, say they have a first and a second, to Central Bank. We need to have a deed prepared. Next question. Who is responsible for preparing the deed in Kentucky? Does anybody know who the onus is on that? Kim, you're my eyes here. I can't see everybody. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I don't know. So in the state of Kentucky, the seller is required to provide deed. Um, okay. Now, with that being said, we, we're happy to pre prepare the deed for them. Most people will go with a buyer's attorney to prepare deed um, because we've already searched the property and we've got the, the previous deed in hand. 
Um, there are exceptions. Your exceptions are going to be your builders that have somebody uh, that does all of their transactions for them or has an a, attorney that does all of their, they, they have a relationship, which they should have. Um, the problem that, that can arise from that is the deed has to be approved by the lender if there's a loan on the file. So what the Holbrook and Holbrook has learned a long time ago, we typically if it is a seller prepared deed, it's usually beneficial for us to always have a backup in the file, um, just to, in case they, I've had people forget them on me um, before at the closing table. And I've also had um, a lot of your lenders are going to funding authorization type situations. They haven't uh, approved the deed prior to, and we know that our deed is acceptable because we work with, we work heavily with the lenders that that typically close with us. So we have that as a backup for you guys just in case. Um, so the seller is responsible for uh, providing the deed. Um, so it goes to our typist. They type up the commitment. Part of that is paying off any mortgages that are on there. Um, you'll also see sometimes the borrower needs to pay off X, Y, and Z lien. Say the borrower had, their name is Amy Smith. I'm just using that, that name. It, and people can get alarmed by that because there's like 14 liens that Amy Smith has, but it's not your Amy Smith. It's a different Amy Smith because Smith is the most popular name, I think, in the United States. Um, so we have to go through the process and make sure that every one of those liens that came up on Amy Smith does not match, quote unquote, match our Amy Smith, so our, our buyer. Um, and we have a whole team of people that do that. Um, we, uh, we call the lien holders, we verify socials, we verify properties, we verify um, credit card payoffs, we verify IRS tax liens that haven't been paid, and those are a bear. So there's all kinds of work that's going on in the background. Um, what I try to uh, pride ourselves on is if there's something big going on in the background, when we send out the title commitment to the lender, because that's the person that we're representing, we say, hey, lender, we just want you to know in big red, bold um, print, we just want you to know that there are liens that we're currently working on. Um, we will let you know, we will, if it's on the seller side, we will let you know if we come to a holding point, if we need additional help from um, the buyer or seller. So the only thing that that means to you guys is setting expectations, <coughs> excuse me. So we wanna make sure that our deals are closed on that con contract date. That's, that's what we're all striving for. Y'all don't get paid. I don't get paid. The lender doesn't get paid if it doesn't close on time. <coughs> excuse me. So that's what we're shooting for. And actually, that's one of the things that we um, highlight in our system is the contract um, date that is um, the target date. So if we're allowing you to know that there, uh, it, it's a messy title, that there's something, something up on it, we're working on it. Um, we will reach back out if we're having trouble receiving what we need. Um, or if there's any explanation, sometimes we have to get the sellers involved if it, the seller, it's on the seller versus the, the buyer. Um, but everybody is alerted to what the situation is. So after it's typed up, um, then it, um, it is in the, the hands of the lender. So the lender does their underwriting, et cetera. They, um, they ask us if, there, you know, if there's anything else needed. And then there's kind of a little bit of a waiting period. And we're, we've got the contract um, sale date in there. Um, if we're inching up on that date and we, uh, we've got all of our stuff prepared and nobody's scheduled anything, we start reaching out to the lender. Hey, lender, um, do we have a close date? Are we clear to close? A lot of, especially new agents, the, the, <laughs> especially if you're using a national lender, they'll say, it's first of all, it's hard to get in touch with them sometimes, but they'll say, oh, it's an underwriting. Um, and until it comes out of underwriting, until you actually have what's called a clear to close, it cannot be closed. What happens once it is clear to close, the next step is the, the lender sends us a, it's called a preliminary CD. Then Paige Hall in our office, and then we've hired a, a new person that starts Monday that will do CDs as well. They do a thing, it's called balancing the CD. So this is where we get in there and we make sure taxes and insurance are correct to the penny per diems correct. Um, we, we 
nail it down and button it up. Make sure that it's ready for the table. Once it's balanced, we send it back to the lender. They give us the okay. And then we're still in a waiting game because they have to send us what's called the package. That's that big, lovely, nice 150 pages of signing that we've got to do. And a lot of people are under the, uh, the perception that, oh, it's, it's set to close. It's clear to close. And it's on the title company, the reason we're not closing. When in fact, a lot of times it's the lender that we don't have the package. We don't have anything to quote unquote work up um, to, to even create what you need to, to be at the closing table. So with that, I'm gonna stop for questions on that part, but then I'm gonna to go to our shared page. Do we have a, any questions out there? Kim, I can only see your face, so I'm, I'm leaning on you, Missy. I actually have a random question that's not totally related, sure. but Go for it. only one person's name is on the deed, but they're married, that other person also has to sign off. Is that right? Yes, correct. Um, what if they're what if they're not married yet but engaged? Should I go ahead and put both their names on there and have both of them sign the paperwork? Well, okay, so that's a little tricky. Um, so are you buying or are you selling on that situation? I'm selling their home and they're not married okay. yet. So I was wondering if it's I should just play it safe and put both their signatures on all the paperwork. Do you know when they're getting married? Yes, in October. As and of right now, sell it before there's and you're going to sell it before October, right? Yes. Don't worry about it. Okay. You, yeah, don't worry about it. I mean, you got my. If you were going to say two weeks from now, I'd say probably a good idea. But at at this point, it might just muddy the waters. Okay. Very good question, though. Anybody else? What happens if there's an issue with a survey? Does that fall into title at all? Or like no, the boundaries of the land? Uh, no? Well, okay, so uh, survey are typically ordered by the lender, right? And if there's an issue of the survey versus what the deed is um, transferring, then yes, we the, we will get involved. But if it's um, if it's just a like a lot of lenders have gone to, and, and I think they should, it's a little bit more expensive. Jeremy Holbrook is big on this. A survey is worth every penny of what you pay for it. Yeah. Um, even in town, it's worth it. We, we actually had a situation where a survey wasn't done. Um, and the, this was in a very nice neighborhood and the pool, the, the $50,000 pool was about five feet in the neighbor's yard. That's a costly mistake. Yeah. Yep. Now, so I, this one happened to work out well because the neighbor was real, real nice. He deeded over five feet of a little crevy back in the corner and, and we worked it out but that could have been if you had somebody that was um, not very friendly and neighborly and that happens a lot um, that could have been a very costly mistake I will say that if you have um, if you're dealing in a property that's very rural um, I can say that personally I had um, some friends who were buying a property and I know Holbrook was working with them but there was an issue with the survey and where it was a rural area out in Lancaster or somewhere like that the people who had done things previously sales they were like you know just like the mom and pop little places old good old boys and there were errors that if if I recall correctly if he hadn't done the survey because that's where the issues were it and I know that Holbrook went to bat major this was years ago and Brenda Bellman was I remember agent. it was ugly yep. yeah you guys worked so hard and so tirelessly on that and and it was due to the 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 the, the previous sales and and not having um people who know what they're doing doing it so that's I can say with Holbrook is that they will go to bat for you they will work for your client I mean to the end and that surveys and in, in areas are super important <laughs> yes thank thank you kim and and thank you for the kind words uh, that is one thing if you're not working with holbrook work with somebody that is reputable don't be yes. along for the ride um because you will be drug into it um even though you it, say it's the lender that chose them um as an agent especially a buyer's agent you have the right to say my buyer prefers to work with 
one, two, or three. And I'm not saying it has to be Holbrook. There's some good competition out there. There's some really not good competition out there as well. Um, and what Kim, it, it was a great example. If it was not good competition and it wasn't properly transferred, it's going to end up, if you have the buyer, it's going to end up on their plate when they go to sell. And how the heck are you going to get a referral if they're stuck in the middle of a mess? So uh, that's my, all I'm going to, my two cents on that fun stuff. Are we, do we have any more questions on the, the kind of logistics of how a title works in our office, how, how it mechanically runs along? No? No, I'm not seeing any in the, the chat, so we're good. Oh, wonderful. Okay. I'm just either really good or y'all are really bored. Um, so the second thing I wanted to cover and a very, very important thing. Will you share, um, Paul, will you share the, the first screen? All right, awesome. Cassie, I know you're on here. Is, is your sister on here too? No, nope, just me. Okay, I was, I was gonna, uh, cause I know I can rise her a little bit. Um, are you gonna this. throw me under the bus for never filling these out and just sending an email? Yes, to yes. How'd you know? Because I don't. Okay, I'm just gonna say I don't like how this is done because I have to either be somewhere where I have to print it or I have to download this, upload it into Dot Loop, and and like figure out how to type it all out to send it. So now we have a link where you can go directly into it and we're almost done. We've rolled it out to some agents in Lexington just as a trial and, and they're in the final stages of actually doing an app. Um, so right. that, that would be, that could be on your phone. So you can digitally do it. Um, so guys, what you're looking at there, um, the first page, it's Holbrook, Holbrook up at the top left hand side and it's uh, buyer's agent worksheet is what they're commonly referred to in, um, in in Lexington and then this is this was just a test that's not a real that's not a real address it was a test uh, sheet that we used when we were uh, setting things up um, a lot of agents want to do they want to do this and I'm old school too and I used to take this and run with and thought I was doing my agents a, a solid they'll say three and three meaning commission three, three on the side, three on that side, and that's all I needed. Well, you all know I love my agents and I would go with that and I'd tell my processor it's three and three. And guess what? I look like an ass at the closing table because I didn't ask the rest of the questions. And I'll go through them a little bit. So, and how it affects the title. That first one, marital status, married or single. They're like, well, it's on the contract. They're married. Uh, why wouldn't they know that? Well, you would be amazed the people that get divorced. Or in the middle of buying a brand new home, they get excited and they get married. Um, when we're running title, we have to run the individuals as well as the property. So I went into the property a little bit to begin with, but we have to make sure that the individuals don't have liens that would encumber the title either. Something that would hit title or the, the, the house property once, once the, the deal is closed. So, cause we're, remember we're telling the bank, this title is clear. So we need to run the buyer, both buyers. Here's how this plays out. And the reason we have these sheets are not because we're curmudgeon meanies that um, require a bunch of information. We really want to look like superstars at the closing table. That's where everybody gets referrals. Um, so if we have this all filled out correctly, things like this scenario don't happen. We don't sit down. I, I see this lovely young couple and they're like, oh, yes, we're so excited. It's our new house, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and we got married last Friday. I'm like, oh, I love that ring. That's beautiful. Um, excuse me, Kim, can you come here? We need to talk for a second. So the person that they married, we haven't run. We're at the closing table. How do we get that run um, ASAP and not delay the closing? Worst thing in the world is delaying a closing. Um, so we don't want that or divorced. Well, my people, they, um, they're divorced. Mm, the, the judgment's not a record because we, we check that. Well, it's in front of the judge. What does that mean to us? 
all that means to a real estate transaction is that they are mad at each other. It does not mean anything's finalized until that judge has stamped the deal. Um, we've seen people rekindle and even get married again after the divorce. So we, we go off the basics of who, who's entitled, who's vested in this piece of property. So we don't want that either. Um, mobile phone number. Um, the reason that might be of pertinence is if, if there is a lien um, on the situation or it, it, totally opposite end of the spectrum. Hey, um, it looks like your lender doesn't have uh, docs quite prepared. You might want to grab a cup of coffee. We're still planning on being here at 2.10 instead of 2 o'clock. That way people aren't sitting in the, the lobby getting irritated at you guys, irritated at us, etc. Earnest money deposit. That typically doesn't change, but sometimes, and I've not necessarily in Lexington. Lexington, typically the buyer's agent holds it, but I've seen sometimes they want it taken out of their commission check. So instead of us having to make a, an adjustment at the table, we can have that all tidied up nice um, at the table. Everybody looks like professionals. Um, seller paid closing costs, that changes. Sometimes uh, negotiations have to change, whether it's due to a repair, whether it's due to a lending issue, whether they're trying to patch up the fact that they're even gonna buy or sell the house. So that changes. Commission. Um, I would say 99% of the time it is three and three, but we don't want to get that wrong. Um, uh, if it's uh, some agents are starting to discount their fees, which I don't think you guys should do. But if you do, we need to know about it. Um, that ABC fee, um, that's important. Why? We don't, if we don't know about it and don't have it on the CD, we don't want to have to send it back to underwriting, i.e. another delay. Uh, if we're at the closing table, we don't want delays. You guys don't want uh, delays either. Then it, it's either, if it's not on there, I don't want you guys to have to pay it out of your pocket. That's not cool. Um, but if we know in advance that it's on there, we don't have to worry about it. The lender knows about it. Um, we can have all the checks correct um, when we're sitting at the table. Um, the other thing, home warranties. Sometimes these aren't negotiated up front. Sometimes they get you guys get the inspections back. Inspections are a little, ooh, I don't know about the HVAC. So they um, negotiate a, a home warranty. Uh, it wasn't on the contract. So we don't know about it. All information that you can tell us, I call it early and often. Tell us about the home warranty. Tell us something's changed. Um, tell us anything that would change the numbers on the CD because the lender is gonna wanna see that. Um, pest inspection, uh, we need to know that as well, uh, especially there's some quirky things on VA uh, deals on who can pay that, et cetera. But again, the earlier we know about it, the more often we know about it, we can get everybody involved, lenders on same pages, so we're not, we're not looking at a delay to the closing. Um, so A and B, has the buyer recently married or divorced? Important. We went over that, I won't go over it again. Um, Here's a biggie, especially right now. Do all buyers plan on attending the closing in person or will there be a power of attorney used to facilitate the purchase? Um, we're seeing a lot of POAs now, especially with COVID. They're fine, we'll even prepare them for you um, for a sm small charge, it has to be recorded. Uh, but we need to know upfront, not, not so we can alert them to be at closing, but that power of attorney has to be reviewed by again, the lender. So we don't want to delay in closing. Do we have any, that's the first page. Do we have any questions on that one? I'm not seeing any, but remember guys, if you have questions, unmute yourself and just ask her. Yeah. Uh, Nicole, if it only takes one to buy, why would, it why would it matter if they get married a week before closing? Okay, so the, it takes, that so uh, that old adage one to buy two to sell is not actually uh correct in the state of kentucky correct. um state of kentucky it's a dower's right state uh if you have a, a married person they as soon as they get married like you could say i do come to my office and close something you are you have what's called vesting rights in that property um, so the, the person, even though they're not on the loan, they immediately have, they, they're 50% owner of that property. So now one to buy in an LLC. Yeah. 
one to buy in a company, yeah, investor type stuff, sure. But if we're doing just a single family residence, it really needs to be uh, both people on there, uh, on the deed, not necessarily on the loan. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, so they can be they can be on the deed, but not on the loan. I see it all day long. Here's what happens. Uh, sometimes we have to do it after closing, called a quick claim deed, but lenders um, or people just in general. So a lender has a situation, maybe the wife doesn't have as good a credit or maybe the husband doesn't have as good a credit, but they can qualify on one of them. So they wanna get the better interest rate. So they just put the loan in that person's name, the loan in that person's name for qualification purposes only. But the wife wants to be on the deed. Um, and, and so does the, you know, the, the law firm that knows that they're married. Makes sense. So are they responsible for the loan if they're not on the, if they are on the deed? No, you're not responsible for the loan. If you're on the note, you're responsible for the loan. If you have signed the mortgage, that gives up. Um, so basically, a lot of lenders will have the non-borrowing spouse, is what it's called, non-borrowing spouse, sign the mortgage as well. What that does is if it goes to foreclosure, they agree to give up their vesting rights to that property. So if it, if it, so this is all about if it goes to foreclosure. The bank wants to be in first position so they can sell the house immediately. If that were a situation and, and somebody uh, didn't do it properly, then the wife goes in the, the, to first position and the bank has to boot her, get rid of her, all kinds of legal a action. And we're again in a sticky wicket. Interesting. I didn't know that. So, now, so, so some of your smaller banks, like a local banks, they, they don't necessarily, they'll, they'll have um, the wife be on the deed and not the mortgage, but all of your larger banks, they, they want them to be on the mortgage too. Are we good there? So if you are legally separated, are you still considered married? Yes, ma'am. You're just mad at each other. Okay. So people ask me that all the time. Well, they're getting the, a divorce or, you know, they're going to be divorced tomorrow. Does the ex-husband have to sign? Yes, they do. And it's not comfortable, but yes, they do. All right. Are we going to the next one? We'll go on to the next one. Yeah. So the, the second page looks e extremely familiar. The only uh, difference I wanna um, explain is you'll see it's all about the se seller uh, and all that stuff is uh, as equally as important for the same reasons. But you'll notice that um, you've got the seller social security number and everybody gets real, um, and I do myself. I don't wanna give my social out to anybody. We're just looking for the last four of those so we can, if any liens come up on the seller that encumber the property, that we can either uh, eliminate those from the title, or if we have to start calling and getting payoffs for those liens, uh, have the appropriate information. And you'll notice the spouse is on there too, because if, if it's a spouse, they, they do have rights to the property. I get, uh, there's a question that I do get all the time. Um, I owned my house before I got married. Why in the world is my um, wife, we've been married two years, she's in Arizona on vacation, why does she have to sell? And it goes back to what uh, Cassie was uh, talking about. Um, she, has to, she has to sign because she has a vested interest in that home. She actually owns part of it. Okay, we can go on to the next page because all of that is the very sim similar information. Okay, so the next one is authorization form. What this is for is your, so the second page was the sell, the listing agent uh, worksheet. Along with that, we send the authorization form. And what this does, it allows our um, staff to, once we get the signatures, go in and re uh, request the payoff for your sellers. So, um, you know, sometimes they have a first, sometimes they have a second. What we do is a lot of banks that we're paying off, they want a written authorization to get that payoff. On that payoff, a big, um, like when we're sitting at the closing table, if they have not gone over the closing statement, 
I would say 90% of the sellers are like, that's not what my statement said. It's because they're looking at their uh, monthly statement, not the payoff statement that works like mortgages do. So the payoff is going to be higher than the monthly statement because mortgages are paid in arrears. I'm sure you guys all have a mortgage. You didn't pay that first payment until a month after you closed. Well, that interest you um, interest is calculated on, it's called a per diem. So we calculate each day up to the closing date that is due. I don't know if everybody knew that or not already. So once this is filled out and signed at the bottom, we go to work and we um, we make sure we get all the payoffs that they're um, in advance. So one of the things that you'll notice about Holbrook and Holbrook, we send these sheets out as soon as we receive the title notes back. Um, so our searcher goes down and searches it, sends the notes back, and um, we send them out immediately. Uh, we have a system that reminds us to remind you guys. So we'll send, send it out the first time. And if we don't get it in a couple days, the second time. And the reason we're hounding you a, a little bit, especially on the seller side, if we don't have that payoff in file to balance the CD, we're not closing. Um, and nobody wants that. I mean, we all want to close. So um, it's in some lenders, um, i.e., I don't know if anybody's dealt with Aquin. Um, that's a older, I don't even know, I'm sure they're still around and service some, but they used to be a huge pain in the rear end. Um, it would take uh, nearly 17 days, 17 business days to get a payoff from them because what they were doing is they were calling the client trying to get their business um, before they sent us the, the payoff demand. That and they're an absolute unorganized mess. Um, so can you see if you didn't send your agent sheets and seller's authorization in until after two weeks that we've um, gotten the notes back. So we're now three weeks into the file. If we have a lender that is um, uh, cantankerous about giving us a payoff, we could be we could be pushing the closing and nobody wants that. And if you want us to send it like if you uh, like if you don't have access to email that very second. If you give us the seller's email address, we're happy to uh, directly send it to them to get it signed. We, we, we are very helpful, try to do anything we can to, uh, to make it easier on you guys. Uh, the new app is going to have the capability of signing with your finger, so that should be even better. All right, nice. do we have any qu questions thus far on that? I've actually had Paige call my clients to kind of assure them for the closing so it all happen smooth out and all in an upgrade. Awesome. Awesome. I do have a random question. What if, what if like you can't find the spouse? Like he's a runaway, he's in jail, he's-, he's I've, I've had that happen before. And there's, so there has to be an action filed um, and uh, an attorney has to get involved, basically saying that this guy is MIA. We've done our uh, due diligence on finding him. There is a wait period on it, um, mm. but it, it, that does happen. Oh, I've been divorced for 20 years. I don't know where he is. He could be dead. So we have to do a lot of that. That's legit. You all know real estate. You newer agents, you haven't seen this, but real estate can get a little interesting. Um, so I did have one with an estate sale. There was nine heirs and they couldn't find like three or four of them for quite a while. And I don't think they ever found one of them, but it took months and months of searching. Yes, searching and then the wait period. And then uh, a judge has to say, okay, we've done all of our fiduciary responsibility. All the other heirs are going to sign off and it, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. I've signed up to 18 heirs because you have to remember, it's not just the heir, it's the heir and the spouse. So maybe, and it was over in the Richmond area. I don't need, know that it was the same one, but it was it was a fun one all the way up in Eastern Kentucky, down in London, Kentucky, Somerset. It took months to close. I don't know if it was you or not on that one. Oh, Crystal had a heck of a deal down on the river with, um, and it was tiny too. All her, kinds her of people. personal property with the survey. No, oh. these were a bunch of heirs oh. th that were involved. I mean, 
and it was, I remember it was tiny. I was like, why is she even doing this? <laughs> I don't know. And she's got a big heart. Um, like $25,000 piece of property, you know, hmm. had 42 liens on it. I don't know. It was <laughs> insane. But we got it close. We got it done. All righty, guys. If we'll, um, no questions, we'll go on to, I don't know. Do we have time to go over a CD? What are your professional opinions? Got about 15 minutes. Do you, do you want to dedicate a whole, um, whole nother session or do you want to, I'm happy to do it now. Oops, I about dropped my phone. I'm happy to do it now, either one. That's up to the, the attendees. Yeah, what do you agents want? CDs can be a little bit more in depth because I'm sure you guys are gonna have some questions on it. Yeah, we might wanna do that, just a whole class on that maybe next month. Yeah. Can't hear you. You, your voice went out. Sorry. Um, time to come up with some CDs. Like this scenario happened to me, and this ended up on a CD. Yeah. You sound like a robot, Nicole. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Later. <laughs> no, Thank I would like to so go much. more in depth about the closing disclosure. Yes. I'll call you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you guys. Yeah. Would you all like to have a class next month um, on the closing disclosure? I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I would like that. I missed most of this one. I got busy, but um, I would like that. Yes. Very much. How about everybody else? Yes, I think it'd be much. great for the new agents to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's nice to just to review some stuff. Um, you know, so I think all agents could benefit from it. When, um, um, when we do this for next month, you guys will join us. Hopefully everybody tell everybody yeah. else, any, anyone that you know, that's newer, um, or that needs more needs to be maybe learn a little bit more about the CD, let them know. Also, if y'all can just word of mouth, spread it around. So. Listen, I've been through broker's classes this year and there's still stuff that I forget. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's very true. That's very true. I mean, a, a couple of questions I didn't know the answer to, you know, that she asked. I didn't know who was, who they worked for. Did you, Cassie? I, when she said, it then I was like oh okay yeah of course you the, right. the lender hires the title company um to run yeah. that for them but um yeah it's just nice to hear that stuff the more you know it's refreshed then I think it helps all right guys well have a good one thank awesome you. Thank, thank you, you. Bye. Bye. thank you thank you bye